Hey everyone, Jared here from Abstract. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to create and deploy your smart contracts to Abstract using Foundry. Let's dive right into it. First thing we'll do is jump on into our terminal here. And if you're on a Windows machine, you'll wanna run WSL dash dash install. We strongly recommend using WSL2 if you're on a Windows machine. If you're on Mac or Linux, you don't need to worry about this step. For this tutorial, you'll also wanna run node V and you'll need at least node version 18 or higher. Now, since Abstract uses different bytecode than Ethereum, the compiler is also different. So for this reason, we're going to install a fork of Foundry called Foundry ZK Sync. The repository that we're going to use, the Foundry ZK Sync fork, is open source, available on GitHub. And what we're going to do first is actually clone this repository onto our machine and run a simple installation command to get this all set up. So first, let's actually grab the address that we're going to git clone and swap back into our terminal here. So we'll run git clone and the address that we just copied from GitHub, and this will actually install the uh, Foundry ZK Sync repository onto our computer. Once that is cloned down, we can change directories into that. And there is a script within this directory called dot slash install dash foundry dash ZK sync. And we'll go ahead and run this now. If that is successful, you should see forge version, depending on when you're watching the video, currently it's 0.02 is successfully installed. A little hack that you can do is just grep the options to see if any ZK Sync configuration options get printed out. That is a little hack that I like to use to just make sure that it is installed correctly. Awesome, so once that is installed, we can actually change directories back out into a new project. And now we're gonna use the forge init command to create a new project. So what we need to do is forge init and we just need to give our project a name. So let's say my abstract project. And then once that is created, let's go ahead and change directories into that uh, forge project that we've just created. For me, I'm using VS code here. So I'll open up the directory inside of Visual Studio Code. Once we open this up, you should see the counter smart contract in source, and we have an associated script and test file for that counter smart contract. All we need to do is jump into the Foundry Tommel configuration file, and we're gonna add a couple of fields in here. So the first one we're gonna add is fallback underscore OZ. Fallback OZ is equal to true. We're also gonna set mode is equal to three. And then optionally, you can use the is system flag and set this to true or false to interact with abstract system contracts. If you don't know what that means, we should have another video on our channel, but this is required if you're going to interact with abstracts system contracts, specifically the nonce holder and the contract deployer system contracts. So for most basic use cases, we can just set this to false. In this tutorial, we're just gonna deploy the counter smart contract. So we're gonna go ahead and set this as false. Now we can pretty much interact with the project as you would normally with Forge. So instead of running things like Forge build, you wanna run Forge build ZK sync. And this is going to use the ZK sulk compiler instead of the normal sulk uh, Solidity compiler to compile the smart contracts. So once we've successfully compiled, we can jump back into the VS code here. And you can see now we have the ZK out directory. So this is the output of all of our smart contracts that we've just compiled. So what we should be able to see is counter.sol in here and we have counter.json. I'll just auto format this so we can see. We have things like the ABI, and the special bytecode to deploy to abstract. We can also use normal forge commands such as forge test with dash dash zk sync flag. Again, this is going to compile using zk sulk, detect any of the tests that we have inside of that counter.t.sol file, run those tests and print out the output. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can get your wallet set up with some abstract testnet funds for you to go ahead and actually deploy your smart contracts onto the abstract testnet. If you head on over to our documentation, you'll be able to find L2 testnets to get funds directly onto the abstract testnet. 
or you can use some of the existing L1 Sepolia test nets and use one of the bridges available inside of the documentation as well to bridge funds from Sepolia to the abstract test net L2. Once you have funds available, we're gonna go ahead and export our wallet's private key. So depending on the wallet you're using, whether it's MetaMask, in this video, I'm using Coinbase wallet, you can just look up how to export your wallet's private key. An important caveat here is that we're not using real wallets with any real funds. So I've created a dedicated testing wallet that has no real money associated to it for these development purposes. And we strongly suggest you to do the same. You should create a fresh new wallet that is not associated with any real funds and will never be associated with real funds. Once you've grabbed your private key, we're gonna jump back into our terminal here. And what we're gonna do is actually set up our private key inside of the key store. So what we're gonna do is create a new wallet key store using the CLI. And the way that we do that is by saying cast wallet import and give a name for your key store. For this video, let's just say my key store and we'll pass the interactive flag here. So since I've already got a key store called my key store, let's give it a new name here, my key store dash two. And obviously we're going to paste in the wallet private key when it asks us to enter the private key here. So I'll go ahead and paste that in and provide a simple password for us. And there we have my key store two was saved successfully. Just make sure you remember the name of the key store that you create. To deploy our smart contracts, we're gonna use the forge create command. So to do that, we can simply type forge create. And the first thing we need to provide here is the name of our smart contract. So if you've ever used forge before, this should be familiar, but if you haven't, the syntax to actually get that name is first the file that the smart contract is stored in. So for us, that's source slash counter dot soul and then the actual name of the contract within that file. So for us, that is going to be source slash counter dot soul and then a colon counter for the name of the smart contract within that file. And just for the video, I'm gonna print a new line here. You don't need to do this, just so you can see uh, more clearly what I'm putting in. Then we're gonna say the account. So we'll say dash dash account. And now we need to remember the name of our key store. So ours was my key storage two. So that is suggesting, hey, use the private key stored within that key store. And then the next argument we need is the RPC URL. You can grab all of the necessary information, including the RPC URL for both the testnet and the mainnet, depending on when you're watching the video from our documentation here. But we'll go ahead and copy the RPC URL from the docs here. And the command that we're gonna need is uh, dash dash RPC dash URL and paste in the RPC URL here. Finally, we need the chain flag for the test net. Again, you can grab this information from the docs. It is 11124. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle is of course the ZK sync flag to suggest, hey, use the compiled bytecode from the ZK salt compiler. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And now we just need to access the key store. So I'll enter my password here. And as you can see, we were successful in deploying our smart contracts. That's it for this video. If you got stuck at any point, remember there will be a link to our Discord where you can speak with myself and the rest of the team directly to ask any questions or answer any issues that you ran into during this video. With that said, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.